if we can start. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Laura. I work at Collabora. And today, we're going to be talking about testing the Linux kernel, and in particular, how we can provide better results uh, to the upstream community. So we're going to start uh, to talk about what drove us into looking into testing quality in the first place, why, should, why we think everyone should care about this. Uh, then we're going to discuss um, the characteristics that we think make for a good test, especially when you run it as part of a CI. Uh, we're going to present some of our work, uh, in particular the device probe case of tests that we have developed and upstream recently. And we're going to discuss some other related work in the same uh, testing quality domain as well. And finally, we're going to discuss what we plan on doing with all the tests that we are developing and what are the next steps. So first of all, a bit of background on why we started looking into this. Um, so Collabor has been involved with uh, automated tests for the Linux kernel for a while now. And we noticed that um, a lot a large part of work uh, in testing the changes that are sent by the developers over to the mailing list and part of the maintenance work from maintainers is still being done manually or it's only partially automated. So we started to ask ourselves how can we improve um, the CI to better support the maintainers to help relieve, relieve some of the day-to-day uh, -day struggles for maintainers and at the same time how can we help developers test their patches beforehand and track any regression introduced? Um, so there are already a lot of CI um, that are testing the kernel, but not every subsystem is currently being tested. Um, so we think that um, we could leverage the CIs to better um, help the overall community. Uh, of course, the kernel is a huge project. so. Um, Making, it, um, making a comprehensive set of tests is a community effort. Uh, so we would really like to see the community more involved in this. And finally, how can we um, raise awareness on the importance of the CI and of running good quality tests? Um, we started thinking about these questions and uh, we think that everything traced back to testing quality uh, in the sense that good quality tests will produce good quality results and reports. And this will be key to ultimately involve the community more. So um, as part of my work in Collabora, I've been working on Kernel CI. Uh, Kernel CI is a continuous integration system uh, for the Linux kernel. Uh, it runs a bunch of different tests on many branches and trees, and it reports any regression be detected over to the mailing list. It also runs uh, automated by section, and Collabora has been helping both on the infrastructure side and also by adding new tests, monitoring the results. And we also have a lab with more than 200 devices that can be leveraged by kernel CI and other CIs as well. Um, so in the process of adding new tests and monitoring the results, we started notifying, we, we started detecting some issues and we also gathered some feedback from the email reports being sent by kernel CI. And yeah, we started to see some patterns and some pain points uh, that we're going to discuss in the next slide. Um, currently, Kernel CI is being reworked uh, from the ground up with a new set of API and pipeline. So with the new system on the way, we took this chance to um, start analyzing the issues that we noticed and um, trying to come up with a plan to tackle them. Um, so. Kernel CI is a community-led um, project and it's supposed to be a tool for helping the community. So we would really like to see the community more and more involved in the project. Uh, but of course, a prerequisite for this is to first uh, trust uh, the Kernel CI results. And the issues that we uh, noticed over the years um, caused some kind of uh, lack of trust in some of the results being reported. So we really wanted to restore uh, trust in kernel CI first. So um, the main issue that we saw in the, in the kernel CI legacy system were some unreliable results being sent over the mailing list. In particular, some reports uh, being caused by false negatives um, that ultimately were not real kernel issues, but were caused by other issues such as infrastructure errors or errors with the test themselves. So, uh, of course, to trust the CI, you need to trust the results and the reports that are being sent. And 
improving the testing, the quality of the tests themselves is going to improve the quality of the reports being sent. Um, when you run tests on real hardware, false negatives is something that you have to live with, uh, but we should at least try to minimize them or to provide enough data to the users so they can um, distinguish real errors from infrastructure errors or other types of errors easily. And from our experience, the large amount of false negatives being reported by Kernel CI was caused either by poorly maintained tests or by tests that um, were using unstable ABI. Um, one example of that is PUTRR. Um, it's a sanity uh, checker. Um, it's supposed to uh, check whether devices on a certain platform are um, detected correctly by the system and that all the modules and the firmware related to it are loaded correctly. Um, the issue that we notice Booter R has is that um, it relies on a static description of the hardware that needs to be provided by the users and maintained by the users over time. And also, in order to check whether a device was probed correctly, um, to, to the driver, uh, it relies on driver naming, which is subject to change. Uh, so if you run the same test on different kernel revisions, you might have inconsistent results. Uh, so this is one of the first things that we wanted to tackle. It's a pretty basic test, let's say, to check for basic functionality. And we wanted to uh, replace it with something more stable. Um, another issue that we saw um, is fragmentation. That's not an issue per se. Uh, but let's say it's something to keep in mind. Um, every, everyone is running its own CI, uh, which kind of makes sense uh, because you may have different requirements based on the uh, type of tests that you're running, on where you're running your tests. But we think that we should at least try to find a common ground for the basic tests. And it, it would be nice to have a set of uh, basic functionality tests in tree so that everyone can uh, use them in their own CI. So what are the characteristics for um, saying that a test is good quality? I think that this may vary, again, based on what type of tests and when you're running it. Uh, but there is a, a, a set of char basic characteristics that we think a test should have, especially when integrated into a CI. So you want your test to cover for a good amount of functionality. You want your test to run fairly quickly so that you don't keep your uh, lab devices occupied for too much time. You want your test to be able to run on different uh, kernel revisions. And consistency is also a key factor, especially when you think of tests running in CI that do automated bisection. Flaky tests are kind of a nightmare when you're trying to run a bisection. And if you have inconsistent results, you may, have, you may not be able to find the culprit commit easily. So we think that consistency should be a factor to, to keep in mind here. Uh, maintainability is also another key factor. Um, we really wanted to uh, use stable ABI for new tests so that the tests in a way maintain themselves and at least uh, there's not much user interaction needed over time. Uh, output from a compliance is also important when running a test in a CI. Uh, so, for example, case of tests as KTAP as a standard format. And if, you, if all of your tests use, um, are compliant with the output format established, then you can trust your CI to do a good job in parsing the results. And you can actually reuse uh, the same scripts or the same parsers for multiple tests, which is always good. And finally, uh, with our goal of wanting to get the community more involved uh, in kernel CI, but in, in testing in general, uh, we really wanted this test to be adopted by the community. Uh, so we try to prioritize in tree tests, um, case of tests in particular, over standalone uh, out of tree tests. So with this in mind, we came up with a plan. Um, we really wanted to focus more on quality than on quantity. So not just enabling a bunch of new tests or increase the coverage without paying too much attention to the results. So we try to enable uh, the tests more gradually and really take our time in anal analyzing the results. And as I said, we wanted this test to be adopted by the community. So we try to prioritize in three tests in general to reach a wider audience, but also to promote reusability of the same basic tests across different CIs. 
And finally, in the process of adding new tests, uh, we wanted to make the kernel uh, a little bit closer to testing, either by adding missing interfaces or reporting uh, missing information to user space, for example. So um, we focused on case of tests and we started working from there because we had a bunch of them already enabled in kernel CI. So we had already a wide set of data to look at. Uh, we could easily analyze the failures and the reg regressions being reported and see if there was any inconsistency. And we could also analyze the output format. As I said, KTAP is um, the preferred uh, output format for case of tests. So with a wide range of uh, results already available from us um, for, from kernel CI, uh, we were able to analyze them and see which tests were missing, uh, for example, output form compliance. And we also saw this as a chance to increase coverage in the sense that case of tests are already a well-established solution, well-known, well-documented. Um, so we saw this as a chance to convert some of our unstable tests over to case of tests, which kind of fits most of the criteria that we consider for a good test. So um, we're going to dive a little bit more into the um, device probe case of tests. So the first test that we um, developed and upstreamed. And these examples will serve as just a guideline of what you need to keep in mind when developing new tests, if you want to fit the, the criteria that we mentioned earlier. So um, as I said, the main pain point we had with the legacy kernel CI system were put our R tests being inconsistent and um, we wanted to come up with a solution to get rid of these booter R checks, but also cover for the same functionality. Uh, so we wanted a solution that could use a stable API uh, instead of just relying on the driver name. Uh, and we also wanted to get rid of the static uh, description of the hardware as much as possible. So used, use some kind of dynamic detection of what's on the board. And to cover for the same booter R functionality, we came up with three tests, uh, one for the DT um, device tree platforms, one for the API platforms, and one to cover for all the devices that were not covered by the first two tests. Um, the reason why we split this is that we wanted, again, to um, get rid of the static description of the hardware. And on device tree, you have the device tree uh, that um, works as a static description of the hardware. And for x86 and x86-64 platforms, you have ACPI tables providing pretty much the same information. So we wanted to leverage uh, information already at hand as much as possible. And for all those devices that do not fit into this criteria, we came up with a third test, which is supposed to be used only for the devices excluded by the first two and to cover for uh, all those devices that are discovered entirely dynamically. Uh, so we cannot really expect to have uh, a description of them in advance um, dynamically, but we need to, the user to provide it. So let's start from the uh, device tree probe case of test. Um, the goal of the test was to detect uh, devices incorrectly probed uh, among the ones defined in the device tree. Uh, the test relies on two lists. Um, one list is a list of compatibles uh, matching the device tree nodes to their driver. And this is actually generated by a script that's also upstream. Uh, the second list is an ignore list, which is um, generated by the user. And this is like, let's say the manual part of the test. And it's meant to contain compatibles for devices that are expected to match a driver, uh, but not to be bound to it. Uh, at the moment, we only have one compatible in the list and we don't expect the list to grow too much. Uh, so it should be fairly easy to maintain over time. Uh, the test then just iterates through all the device tree nodes. It checks uh, the compatible string against the two lists and finally verifies if the device is bound <coughs> to a driver. And this is done by just checking uh, if the driver folder is there in CSFS. So the entire test just leverages um, the information from CSFS. The test has been uh, developed and upstream by my colleague, uh, Nicolas Prado, and it's available since 6.6. .6. You can actually try it out uh, with the comment there. And I left a link to the patch discussion if you're interested in, 
if you're interested in knowing what happened in the whole upstreaming process and how we get there. Uh, so for the ACPI platforms, we try to uh, apply the same exact approach, uh, but using the ACPI table information instead of using the device tree one. So again, the goal is to detect which devices were not probed correctly. And the test also relies on two lists, a list of ACPI IDs matching devices to drivers, and then ignore list um, to filter out just specific IDs, for example, for devices that do not require a driver, but do have an ID. Um, the first list is also generated by a script that's fully upstream. So again, we have only one uh, little piece of information that needs to be provided by the user and maintained manually, let's say. Um, the test just iterates to the ACPI objects in the ACPI um, tree. And for the devices that do have an ID, it compares it against the two lists. And finally, it verifies if the driver was bound or not by just checking um, the physical um, device linked, the physical node folder in CSFS for each ACPI object and checks if the driver folder is there or not. So also this test only uses um, CSFS information, so information that is already available. However, um, the ACPI probe case of tests, um, despite being based on the same approach as the DT one, had a bit more pitfalls uh, compared to that, uh, mainly due to how the information is represented in, C in the ACPI tables and in, in the ACPI tree. Um, so the ACPI tables have information both on platform devices, so devices entirely described by the platform firmware, and these are, have an hardware ID or a compatible ID that we can easily use um, to, to check uh, which driver is supposed to be bound to it. And the ACPI tables also provide information on the discoverable devices. And these have an address uh, property and they are discovered, of course, uh, through natively, natively through bus protocols. Uh, so we don't have any ID for these devices to be able to find the right driver. Um, also, not all the devices described in the ACPI tables may be actually physically there because the same ACPI table might be uh, deployed on different variants of the same platforms. Um, so for this use case, we try to leverage the information from the ACPI glue layer, uh, which is supposed to, is part of the ACPI implementation and it's supposed to link the ACPI object to their physical object. Uh, so we just check the physical node and firmware node folders in CSFS to be able to check for just the devices that are supposed to be physically there. And yeah, as I said, we did find uh, quite a lot of pitfalls when looking at just the information in CSFS. As you, uh, you may have some devices that do not require a driver, devices not assigned to any subsystem, so with no subsystem link, uh, devices that are linked to other devices, and these are the ones with the device link to another folder, and class devices. And all of these do not actually have a driver folder in CSFS, and that's expected. So we didn't want the test to report this as false uh, negatives. Um, so how do we handle that? Uh, for the devices that do have an ID, we can just put the ID in the ignore list. Uh, for all the other devices, so all the discoverable devices, we try to leverage the other information exposed by, exposed by CSFS and try to do some heuristics in the test itself so that we can uh, exclude some uh, use cases. So this was submitted as an RFC. Um, there's actually a second version and it has been submitted a while ago, but there is no feedback on it. Uh, so if you want to try it out and uh, yeah, if you have better ideas on how to handle the, the exceptions or in general, if you have any feedback, please feel free to um, stop by and leave a comment there. And finally, for the third test, um, as I said, we wanted a test to cover for the uh, discoverable devices. In the ACPI cable, the one, in the ACPI case, the ones that were not um, described in the ACPI table. Uh, the goal of the test is again to detect which devices were not probed correctly. And this test uh, relies actually on a per platform binding. 
uh, that's a manual YAML file that needs to be provided by the user uh, that describes the hardware topology. So it, it lists all the discoverable devices on the system. And this is the part that is kept out of tree. Um, the format has been discussed upstream and agreed upon, uh, but this, the file itself is gonna be kept out of tree. Well, the in-tree part is the test itself uh, that just checks all the devices linked, uh, listed in the, um, in the binding and just verifies if uh, a driver folder is present in the CCFS directory or not. Um, so unfortunately we could not fit everything uh, upstream, but we tried to find at least a compromise and fit half the test upstream and kept, keep only a small, small file out of tree. Uh, this test has also been streamed by my colleague and is available from 6.8 and you can try it out as well. And there was an interesting discussion about this and how to upstream it at Plumbers last year. So there's a link to the discussion there if you want to know more and the link to the discussion also um, in the mailing list. So what did we learn from this experience of developing these tests? Uh, we definitely gain a bonus pain point, which is that sometimes the kernel is hard to test. Um, there's no standardized interface providing information, for example, on which devices were probed correctly. Um, there was a bit of discussion in the first revision of the RFC for the ACPI case of tests. Um, we would like to propose a solution uh, and maybe uh, come up with a CSFS tree or some kind of file in a format to be discussed um, to expose information in a better way rather than having to do some detective work and having to parse the entire CSFS tree looking for information. Uh, we tried a couple approaches, uh, having a file with a list of devices probed correctly or having a more structured tree, uh, but we haven't yet found a solution that could actually um, simplify the tests in a significant way. Um, but yeah, if you have any uh, idea or feedback, uh, please stop by in the RFC and let's discuss it. Um, on the bright side, uh, developing these tests helped us find and fix some regressions and failures. Uh, these are just a few examples of patches that we sent to fix issues found through these tests, uh, but we actually found much more. So these tests already proved uh, to be useful for us, uh, so we hope they will be useful for the community as well. So besides the probe tests, um, we try to look at other things as well, such as fixing some of the uh, case of tests um, already upstream. Um, we noticed that a lot of them still don't use KTAP output, and we really wanted to fix this so that these tests could be uh, integrated into kernel CI or CI in general more, more easily. And yeah, we, we, we did some digging uh, through all the self-tests and especially in the MMM, MM uh, case of tests and we already found some issues to be fixed. Um, so we, try to, we are trying to uh, go through all the case of tests and fix um, output conformance and missing configs whenever needed. Um, we also worked on some other areas besides uh, device probe uh, testing. Uh, we, we upstreamed the test for um, checking the properties in CSFS for power supply devices and also a test to check if the Rust sample modules have been uh, probed correctly. So we're trying to use the same approach that we described for the device tree tests to other areas as well. Um, right now, we're also looking at the um, part of the CPU FREC uh, case of test that do suspend resume testing. Would like to get this integration into, into kernel CI as well, uh, but uh, I think there are still a couple of things to be fixed, such as KTAP output conformance. Um, so we're looking at that at the moment, and we're also looking into making the kernels kernel errors uh, more reliable. Um, that patch is just an example of it, of an issue that we try to fix. Basically, the kernel log is something that traditionally is only looked by um, human eyes, uh, but if we can make the kernel errors reliable and consistent, then we can try and have them analyzed by SCI instead. Um, but yeah, first we need to make sure that all the errors are being reported consistently and that the actual errors being reported are 
um, fatal errors, let's say, or at least they are reported in, at the right level. Um, unfortunately, we cannot fit every test uh, upstream. There are certain tests that we worked on, and there's a couple of examples there um, that we cannot really fit upstream because they have a lot of dependencies, uh, such as the decoder conformance tests that rely on Fluster and GStreamer. So there's a lot of dependencies and you cannot really expect to fit everything upstream. And also another example is a test that checks uh, if the watchdog um, triggered the reset correctly. So whenever you have to physically reset the device and check if rebooted correctly, uh, that's not something that you can easily fit in a case of test. Um, but yeah, again, we're trying to um, develop them as much as possible upstream and keep out of G only the tests that have extra requirements. So what do we plan to do with all these tests? Um, we are going to enable them in the new kernel CI system, and we really want to do this gradually. Uh, so we are uh, trying from the basic to enable just the basic tests and checking all the results, uh, find combing through them and making sure that the results are um, consistent and that we are providing enough data to the user. Um, so as I mentioned, there's a new kernel CI system being worked on. Uh, you can check the blog post if you want to know, uh, if you want to have the, the updates on the whole strategy. And um, we really want to um, involve the community more in all of this and a community engagement working group has been created uh, to help us spread the word and foster more participation from the community. Um, this system, as I said, is being rebuilt from the ground up. So um, this is a good chance for us to really take our time with the results and make sure that all the tests work as expected. And in general, to shift the perspective a little bit and have more awareness on the long-term maintainability of the tests. So just to recap, um, we think that um, CI can really, really help uh, developers and maintainers uh, and automated testing in general can help us. Uh, but uh, the kernel being a huge project, uh, we need help from the community and as many eyes as possible looking at this. Um, so with this developer case of tests and the other related work, uh, we started this effort and that's just the first step. Uh, but we want to do much, much more in this. And with the community engagement working group being created, uh, we hope that uh, we'll get more uh, involvement from the community. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to know more about uh, kernel testing in general, um, my colleague Pavel did a presentation earlier this morning. You can catch the recording and that's all about the new kernel CI system. And um, my colleague Helen is actually going to have a talk uh, later this afternoon um, about GitLab CI. So if you want to know more about pre-merge tests, um, you can catch the, the talk. And yeah, that's it. Oh, actually, I have one more note, which was added last minute. And it's uh, about a meeting that is uh, happening tonight at 7 p.m. at the Elysian Capital Hill Brewery. And uh, we can meet there, uh, all the kernel CI uh, folks are gonna be there. And yeah, we can chat about um, what kind of tests you would like to see uh, working in a CI, which kind of results you expect and all about it. And if you have any questions. Let me just. So I'm very intrigued by <clears throat> this notion of having an out-of-tree repository or database or something where people keep per board data files or you know either lists of drivers to probe or I can imagine that being useful for all kinds of things that would uh, customize the tests for specific boards. Do you, uh, do you, can you comment on the nature of that? Where is it gonna be located? Who's gonna maintain it? Uh, so for the boards that we have in the Collabora Lava Lab, uh, we're probably going to keep them 
uh, in the Kernel CI repository. So the description for the discoverable devices on, for example, Chromebooks and other boards that we have in our lab are probably going to be kept in the Kernel CI repository itself. Uh, unless we find another common place, like if this test is useful for other people, we can find another uh, repository where to put everything. I agree that uh, having a common place will be better. Uh, not, maybe not even a CI particular specific repository will be better. Uh, so yeah, it, it, we can discuss this. The, the test is fairly new, so. Yeah, I think just to complement a bit what, what she said, yeah, kernel CI likes like position to have like those uh, test specifications. I think we, we had the boot or R, which is what we play, we're replacing right now. But storing that kind of information as a kind of second level storage, some things you can have in mainline, other things like it's too complicated for mainline. Maybe you can have like all those uh, standards and specifications and data inside like uh, spaces for kernel CI. Any other question? Oh, there's one over there. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess I'm, I just entered when you mentioned about the watchdog test because this is something that uh, on the CIP side we are also dealing with uh, being able to test watchdogs as they expire with kernel CI. So you mentioned this is out of three. Are you planning to upstream that? We are kind of working around it right now, as to my knowledge, uh, but it's not really a nice solution. I think it's a pretty essential feature. Yeah, what we saw is that there is the, the watchdog is self-test, but it just checks for the IOCTLs. Uh, so we wanted to um, actually check that the device has rebooted, has been rebooted, yeah. uh, but we don't think that this is ever going to fit upstream. Uh, Why because, not? Uh, because how do you, like, the board is going to reboot, and we need a way to check that the uh, device is rebooted using only the kernel interfaces available. Yeah, I think, but, but uh, I'm not totally into it, but I think my colleagues were doing right now is basically checking again um, that it's kind of we're expecting now the reboot and the next expected output of the kernel prompt at the end is going to be the login prompt. So this way we are kind of working around that this is now the time where the watchdog should kick in eventually. So it's kind of working, and in addition, we are not only testing the kernel watchdog, we're also testing a bootloader watchdog, because if you're observing AB updates, you want to sure that the bootloader is also able to reboot your system when the kernel is stuck before the watchdog is running. So these kind of things are quite essential, and I think we should really push towards it. Now we are two organizations having the same requirement. I don't think it makes sense to say this is out of three forever. We want to yeah. have the kernel CI system eventually testing that for us, and not we have to test it ourselves I all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I mean. Uh, for sure. Good to know that. L LTP just did something with related to this for a test that, that they create a new mechanism in LTP to deal with tests that need to detect when the, they've gone across a reboot. Yeah. So Good. it might be worth it. Any other question? If not, I think we're done. I'm actually going to put a link in the presentation where we upload the PDF uh, with the, um, the details for the meeting uh, yes, this evening. <laughs> yeah, I'll update it right away. Thank you. Thank you.